Hey guys, welcome back to Buried Lumber. Uh, Matthew and I appreciate you tuning in this morning. Uh, we got a good, very good topic I want to try to cover today. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I, I really enjoy trying to teach, trying to educate. Uh, but with education also comes the art of doing, and that's what we're going to teach today. Uh, why my meal's not sawing good, uh, how speed affects my cut quality, a couple different things. So. Hang on and uh, we'll be right back. do some sawing but we're gonna do some educating I, I'm on Woodmeister's Facebook page every day and here lately I have just seen hundreds and hundreds of posts where guys are asking my meals doing something wonky it won't saw straight you know guys listen I don't answer most of those questions because that is a <laughs> that question can't be answered with a with a sentence it, it has to be followed up with a conversation and to get to that point uh, you need to do some things first before you ask why my meal's not sawing right. Now, over here on the counter is my Woodmiser manual for this meal. Now, I admit I'm not the best at reading it. Matthew is. But if your meal gets, if your meal's sawing great and all of a sudden it goes kapooey on you, something changed. Now, your job is to figure out what changed. Did you quit sawing at the same consistent speed? Did you change blade types? Did you change box of blades? Did something on your meal wear out and you chased it? Or has something wore out on your meal and you hadn't found it yet? So all these background questions need to be answered before the next one is why my meal saw's bad, okay? And it happens to all of us. I've saw it for over 10 years. I fought this thing for a year. Matthew and I, every 30, 45 days, was having to do a, a major reset on it. And that shouldn't happen, people. And the reason it was happening is the two bearings on the uh, outboard side of the mast were coming loose, and every 30 days, so it would move. And we were chasing, we were constantly chasing the perfect setup. It's been a month, been over a month since we found that problem, tightened those bolts up, and fixed it. I sawed with it Saturday, sawed perfect. And I was thinking about that as I saw it. I said, you know, it's been a long time since we sawed a month and hadn't had to touch this machine as far as uh, setting it up, making sure it's cutting level, cutting appropriate. So don't get me wrong, I sawed for many, many years and never had any issue. But at some point, your mill's gonna get some age on it, something's gonna wear out, something's gonna get loose. And <clears throat> before you go blaming the blade, you need to verify the setup on your mill. And if you've never done it, Woodvisor made a good manual if you'll start with step one, two, three, four, go right down the list, I guarantee you, you can set your meal up appropriately. Uh, a lot of things you won't have to do, you just need to verify that it is correct. Uh, Matthew and I learned uh, trust but verify the other day when we took the uh, Boulder Planer class. And that was one of the guy's key things. Don't care if you know where it's at, you need to verify it and then you can trust it. So if your meal is cut wonky, First thing you do, go through a nut and bolt it. Make sure a bearing's not wore out, a roller's not wore out, you know, guide belts or drive belts are not shot. Do all the simple things. If I don't fix it, go back to your setup. Make sure your mill is cut and level. Make sure your deck's level to your mill. Do all those things. Then, if you're still having cut issues, that's what we're gonna get to today. Now, I can't help you with any cut issues until you verify that your mill, a, a blade wants to cut straight. A blade does not want to cut uphill. A blade does not want to cut downhill. And all things being equal, if your mill's right, your blade wants to cut flat. If it's going up, either the mill's making it go up 
or something in that blade is making it go up. Because all things being equal, it wants to cut in a flat plane because it's got three teeth. It's got one turned up, one straight, and one turned down. And if they're all doing what they're supposed to, it'll drag that blade right through there as flat as can be. Um, trust me, <laughs> I've had some days we filled up our swire jar chasing bad cuts. But, and occasionally it can be the blade. I have gotten a batch of bad blades. They were set wrong. We had some the other day. They were set wrong. You know who set them? I did. You know had, who had to pay the price for doing it? I did. I had to go back and reset them all. Had a bad day. It happens. Uh, so, uh, cut quality versus speed. <clears throat> I see a lot of guys, especially new, newcomers, starting out. There's nothing wrong with cutting slow, guys. Cut slow, do you get confident in your, your ability and your machine? But then, when you get to the point, man, I want my boards to look better, you've got to speed up. If you'll read your Woodvisor manual, it asks the question, how fast should I saw? And the answer is, as fast as possible. And there's a few factors that go into that. The type of blades you're using, the hook angle, the thickness, and then the horsepower on your machine. All those variables are gonna be different. But you should still be trying to saw as fast as you can saw as far as loading the motor, loading the blade, and loading your machine. And the faster you can saw, 99% of the time, the better cut quality you're gonna get. Most of the time on the logs I saw, the only time I see any speed chatter is right at the beginning, where you go in a little slow and then speed up. You'll see a little wave. And sometimes at the end, if I'm a little slow running out the end, like today where I got a bunch of flitches piled on the end of the mill, so I don't run right off the end, I kind of slow up. So you might see a little, just a little speed chatter right at the end. Well, I'm gonna try my best in sawing this log, or maybe the next one, and showing you the difference between, you know, a real slow speed, an average speed, and then a faster speed. Now, that being said, we're running a brand new Woodvisor double hard, turbo seven, 55 thousandths. Don't recommend you run them. You run the 45s and be happy with them. I run the 55s because we're running a production mill. I want as much quantity as I can get with 100% quality, and this blade gives it to me in hard 90 pine. Now, if we was running popper, I'd throw a 45 on there and I'd saw faster. Uh, red oak, white oak, uh, I kind of like the 45 and red oak, white oak because it's less blade you're dragging through the, the cut unless it is dry or knotty. This stuff has been down for a while, but it's not dry. It's, it's still very, very wet. Matter of fact, we just put some in the kiln, went in at 35, 40, 35% moisture, something like that. So it's still, it's still very wet. Anything to add to that, Matthew? The degree of blade you're using changes how fast you can go. Yes. Turbo uh, sevens, you gotta fly. Maybe yes, you if fly. your hook angle on your blade makes a big difference. Now, a wood visor, you can buy all kind of hook angles out there. But wood miser, you're typically looking at a four degree for hardwoods or frozen wood. A turbo seven, 739, they're kind of in the same ballpark. I like the, the turbo seven, uh, 737, yes. 737 versus turbo seven, 739. I mean, they're almost the same. Uh, then you got your uh, 10 degree, 12 degree. In the South, guys, I don't recommend ever buying a 10 or 12 degree. They're made for extremely soft softwoods. Well, here's a softwood. It's pine. The problem with it is everywhere you got one of these cussing knots, it's as hard as this concrete floor. So a super soft 10 degree blade is not the appropriate blade for that. In the past, I've had such problem with knots, I sawed pine with a four degree and sawed slower just so I could get the quality of cut that I was looking for so, you know, every, every region of the country is a little different. You'll have to play with that part. But for us, I like the Turbo 7. It's a good all-around blade. It allows me to saw fast, get good cut quality, and cut quantity. And it extracts saw blade, sawdust better than a standard 4 or 10 degree blade. They've, something they've engineered different in the gully, gullet. And I will say, you'll see it when we saw. When you saw slow, you pack that cut full of sawdust. 
When you saw medium speed, it's less. And when you saw full speed, there's not a whole lot of sawdust in there, unless the log is real gummy or there's something different factor. This pine, when we saw it wide open, flip it over, it'd be a minimum amount of sawdust. You could probably, you know, get it in your hand. So you hear the boys out here this morning, don't you? Trying to film over here, guys. Yeah, now they, now they go quiet. <laughs> Monday morning, fight day. Okay, guys. Uh, I know there's going to be a lot of questions on this. I'll try to answer them. Uh, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, let's get everything set up, and we'll get, instead of talking, we'll get to working. I went ahead and squared up this log. It was uh, it was shaped more like a banana twist, <laughs> just the way they come. Not to mention uh, the idiots that took it down and stuck an excavator tooth through the through the meat of it right here, you know, five or six inches deep. Uh, live and learn. I want everybody to more from them. And they know that. Uh, move on. I got the log squared up, and if you can see the cut, it's, it's very good. Uh, now I will say. When cutting fast, you know, I can feel just a little wobble right there. You can't outcut the blade. You can't, you do have to find a happy medium. Uh, can you see this, Matthew? Now this is 100% speed chatter. And that's caused by going in slow. And you should go in slow, so you can expect that. And then the cut gets very good. And then I slowed down a little bit here and that incorporated a little speed chatter in it. And that's still acceptable when you're hogging off the bark on a tree because you're moving a debarker in and out, you're moving your guide arm in and out, you know. I don't like to rub my guide arm more than two or three inches beyond the, the outside of the wood. So if you start out wide, you know, here you are moving the debarker and you reach it out there grabbing the, the uh, guide arm and you'll have a little speed issue. Now, since it's square, it's basically a 10 by 12. I don't have to worry about either of those. I'm not gonna run the debarker and I'm not gonna move the guide arm. I'm gonna focus on cutting, you know, as fast as I can based on the quality of cut I'm getting, the sound of the motor, getting the motor loaded up and what the wood is gonna give me. So this first cut, I'm gonna go to the extreme. I'm gonna cut as slow as possible. Just like today was my first day cutting, you know, and I, I hate doing that, but we're gonna do it anyway, just for training exercise. So we're gonna run this uh, regular speed, no cuts, Matthew, just to let you see, you know, the absurdity from this to that, so that you understand there's, there is a difference. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is lubrication. Lubrication does make a difference, guys. Um, you don't always have to use it. Uh, not every wood's pitchy. I guarantee you most time pine is. Uh, popper around here is not. I never use any lube on popper other than I'm sawing so fast I'll drop a little bit on it just to keep the blade cool. Uh, oak, we have big trouble around here with white oak especially. There's something in it that will gum up the blade it, when it's green. Don't know, just, you know, and you'll saw one long and it won't do that. So I, when I'm sawing, I'm looking down here at the top of this blade. I wanna see if I see any pitch building up or if I see a color change. If you're seeing a color change, you definitely got a problem. You're getting it too hot. Uh, and that too hot can be caused by running too slow as well as running too fast. So there's a lot going on. That's why I don't listen. I got earbuds. I do not listen to the audio books. I do not listen to music. I do not listen to podcasts. There's so much I need to focus on, including Matthew. I don't do that. Uh, now, if I'm sawing by myself, and there's nobody around but me. Yeah, I'll listen to an audio book because there's a lot less to focus on. But when me and him are working together, my focus is on sawing, sawing quality wood, and make sure I'm aware of where he's at. So let's fire it up, and we're gonna make this first cut real slow.
as you've seen, that was painfully slow. But I see a lot of videos of guys sawing like that. And there's nothing wrong with that when you're starting. You know, you know, there's no need to rush and learn, learn what you're doing, learn your trade, and then gradually get faster. Now I can tell just by picking this up, there is a mountain of sawdust in it. And that comes from the blade going through the cut too many times, too slow, and not executing the sawdust. Now, before I even look, this may be an excellent cut, partially because it's a brand new blade. The mill is set up dead on. It's 100% where it's supposed to be. And all those things being equal, it will probably still be a good cut. Uh, we may or may not see a whole lot of speed chatter in there because I never changed speed. I didn't go from slow to accelerate. I just went slow. So let's pop it open and see what we got. I'll look at the underside cut. Eh, not bad, other than a mountain of saw there. Now let's, let's collect this sawdust. I'm losing, losing a good deal of it. Okay. Way too much sawdust in the cut. This is, when you're sawing too slow guys, this is what you're doing to your cut. You're piling all that sawdust up in it and that's creating heat and uh, cut quality issues. Now, let's get down here and look a little bit closer. Of course, we got speed chatter entering, entering into the cut. And what a lot of this is you're, you're putting the teeth into it and the back of the blade ain't in. As soon as the back of the blade comes in, it goes away. There's a lot of cut lines across here. That's more and more times the blade has went around. We got into some speed chatter here. As you see, I didn't touch the speed. That's just the blade itself not being happy. And I know it's hard to see, but there's a line. Every, every time that blade come across, it leaves just a little bit of line. And the slower you go, the more of those lines you're gonna get across your wood. And I think some of that's caused by too much sawdust being in there as well. But as far as cut quality, it's acceptable. I mean, I'd put, I wouldn't call that. Uh, yeah, all in all, I mean, it's a good cut. Nothing wrong with it. Be proud of it. Can you do better? Yes. And now we're going to prove it. We're going to go back and do the same cut. I'm going to kind of run medium speed. I'm going to run faster, but I'm not going to load the motor. If you listen, you'll hear it's still running free, and then we'll compare it to the last cut. So let me get set up. We'll do it again. Okay guys, uh, we could have run this with no cuts, but it gets too long. Matthew just walked from there to here. Uh, he told me that cut was 35 seconds. That's almost exactly twice as fast as the first cut. Uh, the third cut will be faster, but it won't be twice as fast as that. So at an initial glance, there's a lot less sawdust. So let me get this off here. We'll check our cut quality. And you always want to check both sides of your board, guys. Because you got a blade cutting up this way, you got a blade cutting down that way. This blade could be smooth. This one could have hit a nail or rock and be leaving bad striation. So don't forget to check both sides. guys got rewind on your video you can go back and look that's half that looked to be about half the balance of this so by going a good medium speed 
we pulled more than half of the sawdust out of the cut. And let's look at how good the cut looks now. A very little speed chatter coming in. The striations across the wood are less because I'm moving faster so it has less opportunity to go cut, 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 cut. Even across the knot, knot you're going to find them. You can't do nothing about it. I don't see any wave in the cut. It's consistent. Yeah. That's, that's gorgeous, guys. If I was ranking that 0 to 100 on cuts, I'd give out a 95, 96%. You're not going to get much better. Uh, wood miser cuts great, but it'll never be as smooth as a planer. That is in the top 90% of what you can expect to ever get out of a woodmeister. Tickle with it. If you saw that speed all day, your blade's gonna last longer, you're gonna cut more wood, and you're gonna have less of the blade watering with you, less heat buildup. So for the next one, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna saw it the way I saw every day. I'm gonna stick the blade in there and I'm not gonna walk away from it. My hand my left hand is sitting here running a debarker, it never moves. Well, in this case, we don't need it, so it'll just be sitting there. The right hand is either pulling the uh, guard in and out or adjusting the speed control. But when I'm running this cut, I'm going to be setting that thing constantly. If you pay attention, you'll see me move it a little bit as I'm listening to the motor. Because I'm running, I'm trying to run right up against all it can do without overpowering it. If we overpower it, you'll hear it bog down. So I'm listening to the motor as it's loaded up, as it starts to unload. I'll put a little weight to it. If it starts to overload, I'll slack off just a little bit. And that will cause a little bit of, uh, un, a little bit of cut quality itself because you're kind of speeding up and down the cut. But you got to remember, we're, we're a production mill. We need to saw as fast as we can within the quality standards that we want to maintain. So let's set up and we'll do one more here. Uh, that last cut, Matthew told me it was 20 seconds. Now, we went from a minute five to 10, so I didn't know exactly when it started, but to 20, 35 20. seconds to 20. Now, if you're solid production, I don't have to tell you which one of those is better, if you could maintain the quality that you're looking for. And, you know, we're cutting boards this morning for a customer. Now, these top ones, we're gonna make battens out of because of that. A hole in it but when we get underneath it these boards are gonna be on the exterior of a home forever and they need to look good as good as possible and if I see that my cut quality is suffering from going too fast I'll slow down so let's just take a look see what we did I know there's one spot out there I loaded the motor just a little hard and it started to slow down and I had to back off the speed so we may have a little speed variance right there but Wow <laughs> you won't believe the difference in the sawdust there's virtually none on this board. Uh, I mean, it's up. Okay. Once again, that's half of what we had running medium speed. And Matthew points out a good thing. Every bit of sawdust that don't come out of this board and go through our vacuum system ends up on the floor and we got to pick it up, sweep it up, clean it up. Now you don't run a vacuum system, but you do run a discharge on your mill. And the more you can get out that discharge over here to the side, the less you have to walk in. So let's go, let's review our cut. Absolutely no speed chatter coming in. And part of that is because as soon as I hit the wood, I mean, just as soon as I got the tips in, I started accelerating, coming up full speed. The striations on the first log, they were just ever little half, ever little sixteenth. Now they're less because I'm going through the blade faster. Each tooth 
it's not crossing the log continuously it's moving forward it's perfect even over top of the knot there's a little speed ripple right there entering that knot and i i absolutely don't see anything else because you bogged the motor down about here yeah i heard the motor load up a little bit right here and i had to had to slow down just a fraction to keep from overloading the governor and there's absolutely no speed chatter going out the other end because i exited out the piece of wood so you can go too fast i don't see any point of showing it to you there's no point of hurting my meal trying to do it all you're doing is if you hear your motor wah and you just get it up right there it's going wah, blah, 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 you're going too fast back off your speed control it's, it's no different running a chainsaw or a piece of equipment you get it loaded up to where it needs to work and you work it and you know if you go past that point uh this i hope this helps guys i mean this i hear i see it all the time people having issues sawing you know quality wood and and there's so many factors involved we've covered a lot of those we won't rehash them you've got to do everything with these wood misers to saw good wood you know mill's got to be in good shape it's got to be in alignment blade's got to be sharp they got to be in alignment you know belt guides uh belt yeah your uh, blade guides your belt guides they're just everything has to be in alignment that's why when you buy one of these new they cut perfect because everything's in alignment the guys at wood miser done an excellent job setting that mill up getting it leveled up lined up you throw a log on there and it cuts 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 and then 500 hours 800 hours down the length of the mill you're like man i can't cut nothing straight something's moved something's moved figure it out fix it move on uh Welcome to owning an older wood miser. Uh, new wood miser, no issues, most of the time, most of the time. But when you get one that's got 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 hours, you're gonna have to learn to work on it. Now, blades. Get a lot of questions about blades. What should I run, what should I do, this, that, and the other. Find somebody in your local area, either your research guy, another sawyer buddy, you know, find some local information, people that are used to cutting your local species of lumber, if you ask me what it's like to cut a coconut tree, I ain't got a clue. I don't know. We don't cut them around here. Or mahogany or ipe, anything like that. We don't cut that around here. You all know white pine, yellow pine, forest pine, poplar, white oak, red oak, hickory. I'm your guy. I can tell you a lot of different factors for this area. And that may change when you go 300 miles down the road. They have a similar species, but its characteristics are different. So what are we missing, Matthew? Anything? Not that I know of. I mean, it's, uh, to me, it's simple, but I've been doing it for many, many years. And like I say, I keep sitting on wood miser, and I'd love to pick up the phone and call each one of you guys and tell you just exactly what I told you. But I'm running a business. I can't sit there for 30 minutes, an hour every day, you know, doing 100 different texts. Watch this video, it will be helpful. Read your book. Keep your book. Our book stays either there or in a toolbox close by, because yeah. we pull it out. Here recently, it's been like once a week. Yeah, well, we've had it out a lot because we kept having mill troubles, and we found out what it was. You know, a couple bearings coming loose on that tower, and we'd get it set, then it'd move. We'd get it set, then it'd move. Get it set, then it'd move. They're driving us crazy. Because we'd go from sawing perfect on Friday, come in on Monday morning, and couldn't saw a straight stick for nothing. <laughs> I'm tickled to death, we found it. And it was something, nothing, so, <clears throat> excuse me, nothing more complicated than we should have done a nut and bolt and figured it out. There's nothing wrong, as hard as it is, early in the morning or afternoon, stop and go over your meal, wiggle it, you know, go get out here on the end where it's cantilevered. If you can pick your meal up and anything moves besides this bearing over here at the bottom, something's loose. If you can grab your meal and you can wave it, that's how I found it. I was sawing that morning, I went through a cut and I come backwards and the meal waved at me. Which is not uncommon for a wood miser to wiggle a little bit, but it went whoop whoop. And I'm like, whoa, Matthew, we've got a problem. And that, I, now I remember, that's how we found it. So I come up out of that cut, and the head, instead of going whoop whoop, it went whoop whoop. I was like, whoa. If we'd have sawed probably another hour or two, the head would have, you know, impacted the tower because the barrier was about out of it. Not wore out, just the bolts had backed out, and it was falling down. So, 
Enough talking about this, guys. If you got any questions, drop them in the comment section below. I'll be glad to help, help you. Oh, summertime cold. Gotta love it. <coughs> One thing I will add in closing about what kind of blades and stuff you should be running. You see that guy on the wall there? Industrial Cutting Tools, Joe May. They're an excellent resource, guys. Uh, if you use Woodmiser, ReSharp, they're an excellent resource. If you're using Jim Bob's ReSharp, whatever, they're an excellent resource. If you're using my ReSharp, I'm an excellent resource. Talk to some people that have more experience than you in your area that can ask you these questions and help you through some of your problems. And uh, yeah, like I say, Joe, Joe Main, Industrial Cutting Tools, they're excellent people. Give them a call, they'll be glad to help you out. We're going to end it up. Uh, as always, we appreciate Solomon from Third Beer Fishing. Him and Matthew do all our videos, all our editing. Uh, they don't know how much I appreciate it. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, Sheridan Park Farms. I watched a good video the, the other day. I know it's not for everybody, but they were dispatching a bunch of chickens. And I live in the country, guys, and I learned more about skinning and cleaning and packaging a chicken than I thought a man ought to know. <laughs> it was very informative. Uh, if you get a chance, check them out. Chuck and Sondra are great people. Guys, that's going to do it. We'll see you back in a minute. Thank you for watching. Here's a video selection and a playlist suggestion. Click here to subscribe for more great content. We'll see you at the mill.